click on the subscribe button, and press the bell icon, to never miss any updates. was not 
be implemented. I am not sure if I would have been brave enough to run for Congress if the Muslim ban was not in place. I'm not sure if Congressman Keith Ellison would have taken this opportunity to look fear in the eye and say, you are not going to take hold of me. I am going to run for attorney general, and I'm going to win. <laughs> so the opportunity we have right now is for us to use this energy that exists in our community, this excitement, the energy that exists within the civic engagement that's happening in our society. Our newfound knowledge that our resources have always been going to people who yes. have manipulated us, yes. who have used us, Absolutely. who we have been invisible to, and now we need to reclaim our resources so that we can reclaim our power and channel it to a positive direction that will pay dividend for our communities and will implement policies that positively impact our communities, that will embolden our own voices to rise up and say, I am Muslim, unapologetically. I am proud to be an immigrant or a descendant of immigrants. I am not, I am not a second class citizen in this country. <laughs> My citizenship is not conditional. It's not temporary. My vote counts as much as the next person. And my donations are as good, if not better, Absolutely. than the next person. Same green money. Same green money. So, so I am excited, really, for us to fully recognize that. Because we can be, we can be really powerful. We can be really powerful. We are powerful in every aspect of society we decide to show up as our full selves. You go to any hospital, you'll see Muslim doctors roaming that building. Not, you know, afraid, right? Yeah. Not afraid of their capabilities. They know they can do this, and they lead. You'll see that with engineers. They know they've got the goods, and they lead. Now we need to do the same thing in politics. Because we know we got the goods, and we can lead. I remember when I got elected to the Minnesota House, one of my colleagues who was a, a labor leader, he was a Democrat, you know, um, racism and xenophobia doesn't only show up on the Republican side. Yeah. <laughs> I was in his office, I was trying to get him um, to allow me to sign on to, to a bill that he had. And I walked in, um, I, didn't, I didn't make an appointment, I just walked into his office and I said, you have a bill, I, I need to sign on to your bill. And he looked at me and he said, there's something about you that I can't understand. And I said, why, because I want to get on your bill. <laughs> what is there to understand? I'm a legislator, I need, I need to sign on to a bill. And he said, no, for some reason, you want to walk in these holes like you are a white man. Oh my God. <laughs> and I said, if walking in these holes as a white man means that you belong, then consider me a white man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hold the same certificate as they do. I ran the same campaigns as they did. I represent the same number of people as they do. So there is no reason, there is no reason for me to walk in those hallways 
differently than they do. And that might be threatening to them. But that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that every single day they continue to work, walk in the discomfort that they have made us walk in. I am no longer okay with being discomfortable so that other people can be comfortable. I will not dim my light. I will not be apologetic about my Muslimness. I will not be apologetic about my immigrantness. And I will not be apologetic about my womanhood. You should not be. I should not be. Thank you for that permission. I appreciate that. So this, this, is, this is a great opportunity. It is. This is a great opportunity. And I am uh, really excited for the opportunity to change the conversation and for us to really show up as just a member of society who has a voice at the table. So I'm excited to get to work in moving an agenda that is pro-democracy and anti-corruption, one that makes sure that the prosperity that I learned about in that refugee camp, the America that I dreamed about is fully realized that's what motivates me, and I know that's what motivates most of you. And I want to live in a country and raise children in, and ha someday have grandchildren in, that actually lives up to that fundamental idea of liberty and justice for all. And I know that my daughter, who's soon to be 16, when, when she you know, played around with the idea of being president someday, that that dream is much more real for her because she gets to see people like Rashida and I in the halls of Congress. And I'll leave you with this. It is a celebration now about all of these firsts. But to many of the children some of you will have and the grandchildren you will have, it will just be the norm. A friend of mine who was the political director of my campaign asked her six-year-old niece who the first black president was. And her niece said, I don't know. And my friend said, we have a picture of him in our house. How do you not know? And she said, well, I don't know who the first black president is, but I know that we have President Obama's <laughs> picture in our house. <laughs> because this six-year-old did not know that he just was president. And so for the two-year-olds we have and the two-year-olds yet to be born, they're just going to know that there is a woman in Congress who is a hijabi. Yeah. I think being a first is not going to be in their conscience. And I am excited for that kind of America because that's the America I heard about. And I know for those of you who are immigrants, that's the America you were looking for when you came to this country. And that's the America we deserve, and that's the America that we're gonna fight for. Because it is the America that our children deserve and our grandchildren deserve. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your community. Thank you for being on this journey with me. It is going to be very bumpy. I like to stir up good trouble. But I know that I am never walking any hole alone, that I have all of you with me, and that I am always going to be brave because with this many people, no one is ever going to challenge me or make me feel afraid. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Allah. 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 You know, when I first started, I said I wanted to be 
excited and I'm really mad I was excited about the Super Bowl. My congressman will <laughs> forget about the Super Bowl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. John. He's like, oh, okay. You know, but what she said is, what she said is absolutely right. You know, I have a son born and brought up over here. His name is Abu Bakr. And when I asked him what he wanted to be, Abu Bakr tells me I want to be president. <laughs> and I mean, like Abu Bakr. <laughs> 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 you said is absolutely rang a bell and it brought it home. So thank you so much for being who you are. Thank you. And I want to say that New York, where we live, Long Island, New York City, we have a very high population and concentrations of Muslims. We have two congresswomen that are not from New York. One is from Michigan and one is from Minnesota. I am sure that in New York, there's a lot more Muslims in Minnesota. In New York, there's more Muslims in, than in Minnesota or than in Michigan. Yes. yes. Okay? Yes. I'm talking about population density. <laughs> yeah. Right? We so we don't have a Muslim congressperson. We go, we outreach, we speak to them. We're asking other people to do our work. Let's step up and be brave like our sister. Let's step up. Let's get involved. It's not enough just to vote. It's not enough just to raise our voices. We need to start now looking at different fields for our children. I know many of our parents have said, you know, we want our children to be a doctor. We want our children to be an engineer. We want our children maybe sometimes to be a lawyer. Now, let's start changing the narrative and make our children involved in the political process. Because this doesn't just affect us here. But this will affect the, the whole Muslim Ummah throughout the world. One person that's brave can make a difference. So let's remember that, let's honor that, and, and let's not just walk away with, with just a good feeling here, but let's walk away with a plan and a strategy, inshallah. There are a few questions, a lot of people wrote questions, and we can't ask all the questions. Sister, will you answer a couple of questions? We, I know we're getting late. We have to go. The food is ready. Um, just a few Asar. questions. We have to pray Asar also. We have to pray Asar also. We have time. It's pretty far, right? But just a few questions that the brothers have given me. Um, will you answer a couple of questions? Sure. Okay. So the first question that uh, they asked is, do they, do they have a prayer room in Congress? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they gave me a list of questions. That I, I don't know. <laughs> there is uh, a group of um, Muslim staffers that, that come together and do Jummah prayer. Um, I'm not sure if, if the room is a designated one or if they just book a room. Um, but uh, Congressman, um, uh, Brother Andre Carson uh, usually prays with them, and Rashid and I just got our first invitation. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not in town next uh, Friday, but hopefully I'll discover where that room is soon. All right, because many of the hospitals over here have designated prayer rooms. Yeah. So, yeah, inshallah. We have masjid in the with maybe a few more Muslims in Congress, right? Right. right. Okay. Next question is, what is the largest obstacle you have faced or are facing as being a Muslim elected official? I mean, alhamdulillah, I, it, it, ha it hasn't been that bad for me, I would say. Um, I've had lots of obstacles in my life, so this doesn't feel as, um, as intense as it would for, for someone else. Um, but I would say currently the, the biggest obstacle that I have is um, the, the powerful um, you know, right wing media and um, and 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 lobbyists that that are threatened by my presence in uh, some of the committees that I have gotten appointed to. I just recently got appointed to the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, And in that committee, I also got appointed to the subcommittee that does oversight around um, our um, foreign engagements. Uh, and so there, there are a lot of people, um, I let you guys fill in the gap, who are very upset um, about having a, a Muslim, um, especially a, a very loud 
um, the Muslim on, on that committee. And I, and I would say they will probably be a huge obstacle for, for my re-election. So whatever you do here to help will remove that obstacle. So thank you. Before I ask the next question, I just want to spend 10 seconds to elaborate on the answer of, doc, of uh, Congressman Milan. We are from Long Island, a lot of us. And some of the people that Sister Yolanda is talking about might be in our congressional district. So it is important for us to understand the dynamics. It is important for us to- They are, you should send them letters. You should send them letters. More, a little bit more than send them letters, but we will talk about that when I talk about strategy. So rather than getting into it, inshallah, but um, keep, keep aware. Read what's going on in the media. Stay, stay educated. It's very important to be educated. A lot of the stuff that's going on is going on in the world of Twitter. A lot of stuff is going on in many different universes that we're, we might be too busy to look at. And we don't know what's going on and who's attacking who. Our sister needs us. We are at a pivotal time period. You know, we are almost at a crossroads of a new frontier. A new frontier has come about for us Muslims. So let's get educated and again strategize. I don't want to go into too much. We'll inshallah talk about exactly what she was talking about inshallah. The next question is, what is your plan to engage our youth to US politics? What is your plan to engage our youth? So youth mobilization really um, is is very important because they 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 vote the least they're the least involved in in politics and so my strategy really has been in in trying to make sure that we're engaging them um, on not the the politics but but policy. Uh, a lot of young people are engaged around um, climate change and its impacts. A lot of young people are engaged around educational issues uh, and I think using many of the platforms that we have in, in engaging them is probably a, a great tool but I would love to hear and get an opportunity to hear from from the young people on ways that we can engage them more and how they can get involved I have a, cu a couple of minutes if you can just close out inshallah and then we're gonna open up the buffets and then call up individual tables if you'd like to take a picture. Would you be willing to take some pictures with some other brothers and sisters? So what we'll do is she'll, she'll, she'll close out, inshallah. Can we do that before you pray? Oh, oh uh, yeah, but, but, but would you like to say a couple of words to, to close out? Or? Sure. Okay. All right, sister. Thank you. <laughs> TV. Call of Peace. Save humanity.